the birth of Christ Jesus. A Hebrew Israelite would tell you that Jesus was not born of a virgin. And he would take you to Matthew 1, which is quoting Isaiah 7, 14, which says, And behold, a virgin shall conceive. And it would tell you that this Hebrew word for virgin is Alma, which really only means a young woman, a woman of marriageable age. And so Christ wasn't born of a virgin. But the only problem with this understanding is that this word Alma, the seven times that is used in the Old Testament, it's usually describing a virgin, Rebecca, Moses' sister in Exodus chapter 2. And the even bigger problem that you have is that Matthew was writing in Greek, and he was quoting from the Greek Septuagint, which renders this word virgin as parthenos, which literally only means virgin. My Hebrew Israelite brothers, if you don't have the correct identity of Christ, you don't have a true salvation. <clears throat> now I got to respond. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Arachak, Wadash. Double unto the elder apostles and bishops of the great Muslim that rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations to the oath we like tabernacle of David scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. Now, I don't know if he really gathered all his information and fact checked everything before he did this little short video, called himself debunking. You know, our doctrine in which uh, we teach that the Lord was born of actual seed through his father line, which would make him a Judite, a descendant of David, which would mean that he came from a genealogy. Um, he's insisting that when you read Matthew, the first chapter, the 23rd verse, where it talks about, you know, a virgin shall conceive and have a son and it's quoting prophet Isaiah in Isaiah the seventh chapter the 14th verse then uh what he does is he posts he posts up these different precepts and he says that because the New Testament was written in Greek then I mean that all these different words for Ilama in the Hebrew all corresponds with the Greek word Parthenos because the word that's being translated in the Greek for the word virgin is actually parthenos, then that would mean that every time that Ilama is used in the Old Testament, it's talking about parthenos, which is basically meaning an actual virgin, a woman who hasn't been married or touched. But uh, this is where he messes up at because... And, I, and I'm going to just go to the first scripture just to give the example. This is why you got to go into the Hebrew. That's the original source. Before the New Testament was created, you had the law and the prophets. And what language was the law and the prophets written in? It was not written in the Greek originally. It was the Hebrew. So what does the text say in Hebrew? And that's how we get the true understanding. All right. So uh, Genesis 24 and 43. And let's see if the word Ilama is used in Genesis 24. This is uh, Genesis 24. And this is dealing with uh, Rebecca. Genesis 24 and uh, starting at 15, it says, And it came to pass before he had done speaking that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel, son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. And the damsel was very fair to look upon. A virgin, neither had any man known her. So this is an actual virgin. She, she was untouched, right? And she went down to the well and filled her pitcher and came up. So let's, that, let, let's hold that down. And let's go back to the clip. You know, listen carefully, listen carefully to what he actually says. That this Hebrew word for virgin is Alma, which really only means a young woman, a woman of marriageable age. And so Christ wasn't born of a virgin. 
But the only problem with this understanding is that this word almada seven times that is used in the Old Testament, it's usually describing a virgin. So the, he gives the list of precepts that that uses the term or the, 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 the Hebrew word ilama, right? So I went to the very first scripture and I already know what the Hebrew word is there, but this is where, you know, we play devil's advocate. All right, let's see if, let's entertain his, his, his uh, argument and let's say if we go to this particular scripture and verse and we go to the Hebrew, is it going to use the word ilama? Let, 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 let's, now let's find that out. Now, what word is being used? So you got damsel and then you have virgin. The word for damsel is na'ira, all right, for for damsel. So we know that this is in uh, Ilama. And this just basically simply means a girl, damsel, female servant, damsel, little girl, a, a, a young woman, marriageable young woman, all right, concubine, prostitute, maid, female attendant, female servant. So this is clearly not the word, all right, that's, that, that was used in Isaiah 7 and 14 to describe this particular virgin, all right? And here go the other word for virgin. And what is the Hebrew word? Bathwa Allah. All right, Bathwa Bata, Wala. All right, Bathwa Allah. And it says, a virgin, right? It just simply say a virgin. But notice this is not the term for, this is not Ilama like he implied in, in, in the video. He gave the precepts. This was the first one. So you could see that this dude was not accurate at all, but he was very confident that what he was speaking was uh, truth. These Christians, man, they, they, they really embarrass themselves when they come up against the truth. All right. A virgin, pure and unspotted, so-called as being separated and secluded from intercourse with men. All right. So if you're going to use the actual term for an actual virgin, the correct term would be Bathwa Allah. He would have a point if. Isaiah uh, 7 and 14 uses Bathwa Allah. Therefore, Matthew, the first chapter, it would actually um, it would actually use um, the, the, the Greek equivalent, which that's how you know when you go to uh, Matthew, the first chapter, and you read the, the Greek, it uses the word Parthenos. And uh, that's not the correct term, because even when you go to uh, the New Testament, uh, Hebrew, the Hebrew New Testament. Now, this is uh, the book of Matthew. All right, the first chapter. And uh, we're going to go down to the 23rd verse. And this is this is the, the 23rd verse right here. Okay. So. We see it says. Uh, ha, Hana'a. And then it says. Ha'ilama. Ha Ilama, right here. Let me zoom. Let me let me uh. Damn, can I zoom in? I can't even zoom in. But uh, I, I I highlight it right there on the screen. Okay. I Lama. And then it says maiden, damsel, young woman, which simply that's exactly what it means. So even in the New Testament Hebrew, it uses the 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 correct. Hebrew word which is Ilama. It doesn't use the word Bathwa Allah. You see that? This is why you got to go into the Hebrew. All right. So now it, it it makes sense. Which so which proper term should be used? Which uh Slaki, which proper word should be used? Is it Ilama or is it Bathwa Allah? Now we go to Isaiah 7. And you get your answer. 
Isaiah 7 and 14, therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Right? And then the Hebrew word is what? I Lama. So either the the uh the prophets who 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 wrote this in the Hebrew, either they're wrong or you wrong. And you know, he, he thought this was an eloquent and and a, a profound uh argument to make, not really understanding the 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 the, uh, the etymology and going into the original text using the original language. He tried to go there, but he failed miserably, as you as you just saw. So let, let's go back and get that again. Conceive. And it would tell you that this Hebrew word for virgin is alma, which really only means a young woman, a woman of marriageable age. And so Christ wasn't. And Matthew was quoting who? He was quoting from Isaiah 7 and 14, which was written in what language first? It was in the Hebrew. Come on, my man. The, the law and the prophets was written in Hebrew. So you go to the original source. You go to it. What, what, what does it say in the Hebrew? Now, I'm sure when you go to the Greek, you go, to, you, you, you read the, um, the Greek Old Testament, I'm pretty sure it, it's going to use Parthenos. Yeah, this is Parthenos right here. But is that the correct term? So obviously, it uses Parthenos for I Lama and for Bafwa Allah, which that, that that's that's confusion. So there's clearly you can see you can detect that error if you if 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 you're spiritual. You can see the error of the translations. All right. It's not supposed to use the term uh, Parthenos if the word it being used is uh, Al Lama, which simply means a, a, a young woman of a marriageable age. Bafwa Allah is talking about an actual virgin woman, a young woman that hasn't been touched. So, this is why you have to, you know, go into. The meaning of these words and actually study You know because these Christians They're trying to study and they're trying to go into the original Language they wasn't doing this at first We forced them to, to, to Do their research And then now all of a sudden They're confident to try to uh, Come against uh, what we teach And they're still failing This is an embarrassing. This is a, a another embarrassing moment for for you Christians, man. You really don't know what the hell y'all talking about, and it wouldn't make sense of the Lord being of a a, a virgin, an actual virgin, when he's supposed to be of the a, a son of. He's supposed to be the uh, the root and offspring of of David. He's supposed to be the actual son. All right, the, the 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 seed of David, which his father happened to be of that line. That that would be the only logical way of explaining how he would be of the line of a uh, uh, of David, of the tribe of Judah. So, this dude was clearly wrong. All right, and let me uh, get this real quick. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, Proverbs 28, 26 It says, he that trusteth in his own heart Is a fool But whoso walketh wisely He shall be delivered You know, so you're not supposed to You know, trust your own Opinion Alright, we, 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 we trust upon the spirit The spirit is what gives us the understanding Which a lot of these Christians don't have 
So, you know, I had to, uh, you know, make a follow-up response video to this right here. This dude don't know what he's talking about. As, as, and it's typical for a lot of these Christians, you know? So, uh, you know, you brothers, you know, you brothers out there, you encounter a Christian and they try to make this talking point, man, just go into the Hebrew. That's all you got to really do. Know the Hebrew and, 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 and understand the meaning of his words. It's real simple. All right, study to show thyself approved. You know, we, we got to be like the church of Berea, searching the scriptures out. All right, and, and, and once you search these scriptures out, and you you know you you get that unction and you and you know all things, then you can break these uh, strongholds. Okay. So uh, you know that that's pretty much it. I'm not gonna make this a long video. I had to do a response though. All right. So with that, I'm gonna give all praise to y'all. Bashmiyah Shalom.